All right, welcome back. Now, Nigeria's digital economy has experienced significant growth in recent years, fueled by increased internet penetration, mobile technology adoption, and the rise of tech startups. The country has a large population of tech-savvy youths who are actively engaging in various digital activities such as e-commerce, mobile payment, and online services. However, Nigeria, like many other nations, has had issues with cybersecurity attacks and data breaches. Financial loss, reputational harm, and invasions of privacy are just a few of the serious repercussions that data breaches can cause. In January last year, for instance, a hacker claimed to have accessed the NIN database, but the National Identity Management Commission names the night the breach. There have been many other reported breaches like this, with the organizations involved often denying them. These all explain why the new data bill is very much what Nigeria needs for its digital economy at this point. Now, joining me right now to discuss further is the CEO of Entrepreneur NG Mastermind, Believe Ibui. Well, many thanks for joining me on Business Insights, Believe. Thank you. Welcome. All right, I so much believe in you, believe. So we're going to have a wonderful <laughs> time on the show today. Okay, let us start uh, this way. How significant is uh, this uh, particular uh, law that was just signed by the president? I think the law is very, very significant as it enhances uh, business competitiveness in terms of the business. If you look at it from the business sector, then generally as individuals, it also helps you, uh, makes you aware that you are protected that your data and everything that you put out every day is highly protected from people who can actually take advantage of those data. Okay, so uh, aside from all that you have said, uh, so a lot of people still don't understand uh, specifically, you know, what the law aims to protect. Is it just uh, for invasion of privacy or data breaches or cyber security or what exactly? All of that, all, all of that, and then including as... Um, I think before now, we've not really had a, a, an actual law that actually uh, that is explicit about how our data can actually be protected. And every day we shun our data out, even as, a, as an employee, your HR managers have your data. As a, as a we, we work in an organization, we bid for a contract, we put our data out every day, medical records and everything is out there every day. But there's no actual law in Nigeria beyond the ones that we have, uh, the Child Protection Act and all of those ones, that actually helps you to protect your data in terms of your, your, your normal human data. So I think that is what this law is trying to do right now, by giving you the right to object whether your data should be used or not, then the right to seek consent if your data is available somewhere, and all of those things. And then those are the issues that really make the data protection more significant, because all of the loopholes that the Child Protection Act and other data... Um, rights that have been available mm. before now the law has been able to now put all of them to perspective and then makes it makes that protects you mm. in terms majorly in the internet space which is the, the internet of things right now we've noticed that the internet exposes us and then at times you would think of something in your head and then you see it on on, on facebook and all of those things all of those things are going to drastically reduce right now that's what made the law more significant Okay, let's talk on economically right now. Sometime um, last year, I said it in passing that uh, the, the database of um, the NIN was actually um, attacked, although the NIMC came out to deny that. Would you say that with this new law, uh, the issue of cyber threats and hacks would be reduced significantly? It will. It How will. So? How? It will. Okay, how? One, for instance, uh, the, the cyber security... Is, is one of the elements of the Data Protection Act. Also, we also know that Nigeria is, uh, I think, 47th in the, in the Cyber Security Index, and fourth in Africa. That, is, that shows that we are we are really, really exposed in terms of our data as a, as a country. We are exposed as individuals. We are exposed. Now, the issue that during the, for instance, I, I, let me just bring this back. During the the ENSAS period, we saw. Uh, what's, the, what's the name of this group? Anonymous, mm -hmm. where they were, they were ushering out data of uh, the tell you this are security officers, this is where they were serving. The, for us, at, during that time, for if people may think okay, it was good, but if you look at the risk involved in that, that if our security officers and their data where they were serving their personal information could be hacked by an organization who doesn't know where they are, whether they were in Nigeria, whether they were outside of Nigeria, who doesn't know, and then that shows how 
at risk we are as a country. So for me, this data protection actually tends to now minimizes all of those things. Yeah, we saw it as a crime, but what is the law that persecutes such people if even though it was a crime? So there was no law per se as at that time actually persecute such people or bring them to justice or the, the, the penalties for such things. So that th those are the economic importance right now. So if you look at you're doing a business already internationally, you are sure that you have right. Almost all of the data rules, laws, you know, Google and all of those things that we are assented to when we're trying to fill our funds, they are not Nigerian laws. Yeah, they are, they are European laws and all of those laws that we just assented because we want to use those platforms. But right now, this is the first time we now have our own and we want to say kudos to, to NISTA, that, that is the Nigerian um, Information Technology, uh, Technology Agency that is actually putting this, that's put this law together right now. All right, I still need to understand some of the benefits for the whole digital economy because uh, the world has gone uh, global and uh, everything has now been digitized, including uh, the way we do things here in Nigeria. You know, when most people uh, think of um, data protection and the law specifically, they only think of um, the data when they go out to browse, uh, when they check on their social media, and um, of course, uh, when they do interactions with family and friends. What about uh, for the financial um, services? You know, a lot of people now do uh, transactions uh, uh, with e-commerce, uh, e-banking, and of course uh, e-networking uh, as well. Uh, would, you, would you really say that uh, with this new data that um, Nigerians uh, uh, would not be scared to do more of um, these financial transactions? For instance, uh, uh, people have complained how their bank accounts and uh, you know, their financial statements have actually been hacked into before now. How strong uh, or how strongly can this cover, you know, the financial services sector? Okay, yeah. Okay, one, let's let's look at it from this way. Before now, we were having a lot of issues with getting asset. Uh, we try to convince people to even use online purchase. And that is why you now see the big e-commerce platform doing uh, home delivery, pay, at, pay after delivery services. Now that, is, that shows that people are not really secure, are not really safe. They don't feel safe enough to leave their data, to use their CCV code and all of those, their personal financial data online. So this this law right now kind of tends to help us to understand that you are protected. Your data cannot be sold, cannot be transferred, either cross-border or even locally right now. So that, that it just shows that we are, we are we, we, I want to use the word, we are more law uh, protected right now as compared to before now we know that in the digital era data is good and anyone that data is good right so anyone that has a good mind should be able to protect his good mind i think that's just the way it is right now so nigeria with our population is a data good mind globally for anyone who understands what data is all about so if nigeria would have huge population huge access to data and all of those things cannot protect its own good mind as mm. it were in data form in data form right now there's a problem, and that's what the law has tried to do. Yeah, there are some loopholes that people are going to not see in the law, and that is the concept of the law anyway. It can be amended, but at least it's, a, it's an attempt in the right direction for the mm. first time for us to have uh, a, a law that actually now protects our data. This is not human rights laws that protect human beings or anything, but our data, our personal data, our information data, our date of birth, our financial data, our records, all of those things that we put out every day, oh, right. our phone log and all of those things that we put out every day. There are now rules that, are that governs that prohibits uh, a company A from selling to company B without consent and all of those things. And, and for me, it's good. So because I can be penalized right now, if I share your personal data, mm. you can sue me and all of those things. That as an individual, as a company, there are penalties to be paid and that is the level playing right now as compared to before when there was nothing like that. All right, now, in the wake of uh, privacy uh, violation and data breaches, how far do you think this act will help in enhancing customer trust in terms of um, e-commerce? Do you think Nigerians will now want to transact more electronically? Yeah, they should, because uh, already there's a lot of awareness as regards online, online business, online, online banking, e-commerce, anything. Now, we use the word Internet of Things, and the Internet of th Things concept is because We've seen that everything is now revolutionizing towards or evolving towards the internet, the internet use of internet and everything within that ecosystem. So, with with when you know that there is a law that protects you against anything, then you have more confidence to use it, to to want to use that because you feel protected, you feel secured. 
yeah, the, the issue of cyberbullying and all of those things will probably be 100%. I wouldn't do 100% because we see people who always want to uh, shortchange the system. Mm. But we can say that we now have more, uh, the law is a little bit more, um, it's protective right now. Even though we know that it's safety and it, safety in terms of data safety is your responsibility anyway, mm. but you can be sure that if at all for any reason you, you give your data to an organization, be it commerce, be it a bank, be it anyone, yeah. as long as it's your data, that person has the responsibility to hold that data in trust. That because you do so there's going to be consent. So that's why we now have the core element of the of, of, of the of, of the law is talk about is talking about right to object. So like I have the right to object. I have the right to withdraw my consent. So if you have my data with you, I can write to you and say please remove my data from your database mm. in the, before it was not like that so that's what the law is talking about right now the right so we are now subject data uh, subject um, data subject so every nigeria right now is not a data subject and as a data subject you have the right to protect my data my sub me as a subject whether you are a company or you are an individual you can't just steal people's data out there anyhow again and think that nothing will happen you can't go with the name of joke or anything just throw that again yeah, people are having skepticism. Yes, people, I, I saw something on Twitter where someone said that the politicians will arrest you if you put their data out illegally. Mm -hmm. Why should you put the politicians' data out illegally in the first instance? Yeah, you know, it, and this things only happen between you and I know now during campaign period when people want to launch campaigns of candidates and all of those things. But beyond that, we see that let's look at it, beyond the political and the politi campaign period, the uh, shenanigans, which we don't know is going to happen. But when that time comes, I'm sure those in charge will know what to do. Let's look at it in terms of the business perspective, mm. in terms of economic growth, in terms of of um, the, the young uh, developers who are trying to generate build, uh, um, build startups. What does it pretend for them? What is the advantage for them? And we can say that for right now, we are we are more secure than ever because we now have a law that secures us, that protects us, and that is the concept of data security or data protection. It's about security, it's about control, and it's about, uh, about control and, um, and access. And that's what we have right now with the law. All right, as we round off now, the final question would be, uh, what um, threats uh, do you see uh, that could uh, you know, be attributed to this new law and um, what can uh, we do to actually stem it? Well, the law has been in existence. The, the um, NIDA has only put this law out for a long time. It's just now that uh, to the, uh, to the assigned to it. So it's not a new law. It has been out for a long time. So now that it's out, we just like when the startup bill came up, we all alluded to, we all, those of us in the startup ecosystem, we were happy about it because right now, there's now a law that actually protects startups and gives, that gives a guide like how you can do funding equity and all of these things. The same thing is what the data protection law is doing. It's going, it's going to help startups. It's going to give you access to 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 the fact that you know that your, your anything you generate is is real. Mm -hmm. There's no more data manipulation. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it, it is. We call, what we can do right now to ensure that it the law is sustained is you need to keep talking about it to create more advocacy around it. You need to keep a. Uh, uh, creating awareness around it. So the commission that, 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 that has been commissioned to, 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 to start by the law, by this data protection law, I'm sure that, that should be one of the things that will, because the law is already in place. If you take feedbacks, yes, they let take more feedbacks. What are the loopholes in the law that people can, can pick up on? All and right. then majorly awareness and advocacy should be done. Do you focus it on the people who are going to be using it more, because those are going to affect majorly, who may never understand even the law itself, are those who are running e-commerce, the young people who are trying to do e-commerce businesses, WhatsApp, WhatsApp CEOs, right. as we call them in our, in our niche. All right, thank Can you, you so me? much. Uh, yes, uh, you have really been very insightful. Okay, thank you. Big thank you for all of the useful insights uh, that you have shared. I have been speaking with um, Believe Iboyi. He is the CEO of um, Edupreneur NG Mastermind. Thank you so much for the useful insight that you shared today. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you very much.
All right, as we go on the show today, the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents in Nigeria, Amburn, has vowed to ensure the implementation of the frameworks uh, put in place by the Central Bank of Nigeria to ensure compliance by members. National President of Amburn, Victor Olojo, flanked by other officials, said this while addressing newsmen on some issues raised by the House Committee on Banking and Currency with regards to agency banking and financial inclusion. I'll leave you with details of that package and I'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. The impact of mobile money and agency banking hit a crescendo in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown, with active point-of-sale terminals used by merchants for financial transactions, recording about 3.1 trillion naira in the second quarter of 2021. The increase in the value of POS transactions in Nigeria shows the spending patterns of Nigerians and payment preferences, reaching all new and cranny and, by extension, deepening the nation's financial inclusion drive. However, there have been complaints of proliferation of agents, lack of KYC to even issues of theft and other fraudulent activities. The Yamban executive spoke of a tax force for self-regulation while clarifying other grey areas. Just take one of the case studies. I mean, part of the framework of the CBN is that a mobile money or bank agent should be in a brick and mortar location, like an address that is traceable. But what we have today are agents under umbrellas, trees. We have agents who are walking this terminal. Rising from our fifth AMBA annual national conference held in Abuja last year. One of the resolutions that came out of our robust deliberations with all critical stakeholders was to begin self-regulation using our tax force. Victor Olojo lamented that the members are often on the receiving end when it came to counterfeited bills and other fraudulent activities, making a renewed call for radicate trading. There was a robbery case that happened in the East and um, somebody's phone was snatched and those um, you know, um, bad guys came to Lagos, they took the SIM and transferred the funds to an agent. You know, and the agent innocently actually served that customer, not knowing that that customer is actually you know, um, an arm robber. What we find out now is that those merchants now turn the outlet to mobile money again outlets. And that's not what the PRS is making meant for. And those that give out the PRS know that this is what is going on. But they do not query them because what they want, they want money. The growth in the number of POS businesses in the country has formed a major source of employment for Nigerians, especially the youths. <laughs>